Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now for your host, Kimberly McElmore. Good evening and welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses from across the country. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore, and welcome to a special edition of tonight's show. With us, we have Tim Ward. Tim Ward is co-author of the book, Pro Truth, A Practical Plan for Putting Truth Back into Politics. He's on the board of directors that oversees the Pro Truth Pledge, founded by his co-author, Dr. Gleeb Tersperski. Together, they wrote Pro-Truth to help people protect themselves from the lies of politicians and to create a pro-truth movement that they believe is essential for democracy. Tim is also the co-owner of Intermedia Communications Training, Inc., based in the Washington, D.C. area. He works with global organizations helping them communicate better. So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, Mr. Tim Ward. Hey, Tim, how are you this evening? Hi, Kimberly. I'm so well. Uh, It's a pleasure to be on your show and to get a chance to share some time with your listeners. Well, I'm excited because your topic of conversation is right on point. So I cannot wait to hear about this because, you know, there's definitely some issues going on with the truth in politics. So before we dive in that, though, um, please tell the listeners a little bit more about who Tim Ward is. Sure. Um, in my 20s, I did a very unusual thing after university. I packed up and I went to India. And I spent a year traveling through India, eventually went to Southeast Asia and ended up teaching English in China. And I did this because I was really curious about how most of the world lived. I'd grown up in North America. Uh, I had a college education, but I really felt I didn't understand life at all. And so I spent two years on the road, really just trying to be open-minded and curious about how people lived on this planet. And when I came back to North America, ultimately six years later, I'd say it gave me a very different perspective. Um, I felt that I was free from a lot of the things that seem essential to most people, certain expectations about jobs, about security, about their their, their path in life. And, and this has allowed me to be very, very flexible and mm-hmm. to, to keep my mind open as much as, as much as possible. That led me ultimately to become an author. I've written 10 books and wow. also a publisher to be interested in other people who wanted to publish books about what it takes to create lasting and significant change. And through my career, I've amazing people and have really become convicted that the best thing we can do with our time is work to make the world a better place for those who, who share the planet with us, people and animals and, and plants, and also for the future. So that's, those are really my commitments in, in life. And this book, Pro Truth, really very well aligns with that sense of what makes life meaningful to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I could say that that's a huge um you know, opportunity. Well, and then for you to think right after high school to do something like that, to travel around across the world, literally, and to figure out who you were and what's most important. And so you've kind of led your life in that same perspective. So you said you've wrote 10 other books. I kind of want to dive in that a little bit. What, tell me a little bit more about some of the other books that you wrote, since your focus is all about, you know, pertaining the truth and getting people to see that from a different perspective. Well, the first three books that I I wrote are actually a trilogy about my time traveling through Asia. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a book about time I spent living in a Buddhist monastery in Thailand. Uh, That book is called What the Buddha Never Taught. And it's about what happens when people from a foreign culture go and try to put on the religious robes of Mm -hmm. a very different culture that practice their religion. And the monastery that I stayed at had Mm -hmm. half Western monks and half Asian monks. Wow. And it's one of those rare Buddhist comedies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting. Interesting. And, uh, Go and ahead. I will just add for, I know that you've, you mentioned to me that many of your listeners are in India. This is mm-hmm. one of my books that's actually available in an Indian edition. It's in English, but you can buy it in bookstores in India locally. 
Wow. Well, see, I mean, you just never know, right? I mean, that's yeah. amazing that you've had all these opportunities. And, you know, with you traveling the way that you've done throughout the years, what made you feel like you had to continue to to do that in, in order to, I don't know, was, was it to in order to understand who you were more or just like you said, to continue to share truly the differences of what we see and feel, what we think that we know on a day-to-day basis? You know, you've, you've got it. It's, it's, it's both. One travels, I think, to better understand oneself, but you do that by having your mind open by all the people and all the cultures that you meet. And you see who you are in this conversation, in that situation, in this, in this culture. And I, I found um, travel was, to me, the way that I learned about life. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I, after my time in Asia, I went on and eventually wrote a book about early cultures in Europe and another book about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in uh, in, in Africa and at the same mm-hmm. time developed a consulting business together with my wife and partner, which has us had us going all over the world, mm-hmm. teaching people how to become effective communicators. And we would work with fabulous folks in development and, and environment fields um, who really struggle to have other people hear their messages and act mm-hmm. on their messages. Everything from issues of, of climate change to what it takes to alleviate poverty, to cure to cure disease for organizations like the, the World Health um, Organization, the World Wildlife Fund. It's been fabulous. And I'm only using the past tense because for the past year, due to the pandemic, we've not traveled at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I can imagine it. Because once you, if you did, you, you wouldn't be able to either get there, or either if you did get there, you would probably wouldn't be able to get home. So, yeah, that's exactly a lot of that going on. Yeah, at this point, I'm sure. Obviously, we all want the uh, borders to open back up, so to speak. So, you know, that's something I'm sure you're looking forward to, and other people. But you know, when I hear you talk, you know, and you talk about culture and and understanding and being able to communicate, you know, that's the biggest problem that we have in our country today and in our, just within our own communities, period. So being that you are here right here in the DC area and I live outside of DC area, you know, what is it mm-hmm. that you see and how do you feel about the communications and, and what people not understanding the culture, period. And that's the reason why we have the problems that we have today. Tell me your insight of that. Whew. Well, I mean, um, the United States right now uh, is is grappling with a massive, unresolved feud with itself, mm-hmm. right? That that is much older than the Civil War. Mm-hmm. You know, ultimately was all about what many people have called America's original sin, slavery, mm-hmm. which was the basis of much of the the nation's early early economy. And here, almost over 150 years after the Civil War has been fought. We still have seen in the Trump presidency these horrific events, including the uh, the uprising just a few, just several weeks ago in the Capitol. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's an awful lot of turmoil in this country, and I, I have to say, uh, a strange piece of that turmoil has been how one side has just plain decided not to tell the truth. Exactly, uh, and uh, you know I, I'm nonpartisan myself mm-hmm. and the the book that i that i've written pro truth is deliberately nonpartisan. i don't think truth as a party every right. political party benefits from from the truth but quite sadly you've had the, the president many of his supporters truly abandon the truth and just say whatever it takes to try to to, to win power and stay in power mm-hmm. and this has been traumatic for the united states because a democracy depends on a baseline of truth, right? That's how people with different values, different views can Mm -hmm. come together and seek compromises in a political system. But if it's just my side yelling my truth and your side yelling your truth, then you, you never have compromise and you set yourself on a, on a, on a path to war ultimately. Right. Right. And, and you know, the, the sad part about it, like you said, you know, even prior to the Trump presidency, we have seen this, for many, many years. And, you know, being that I am a, a black woman and it's, I have seen it all my life, you know, no matter, you know, we're not looked at. I, I can say personally, I have not been looked at as always just being the woman being, you know, whether I'm educated or not educated, just being accepted for who I am. It's usually first that, oh, you're a black woman, you know, and then it comes everything else. And it's, it's that same focus and that same misunderstanding that, 
it's it's what people have learned because we don't we don't we're not born looking at color. We're not born saying trying yeah. to figure out who is who is right or who is wrong or you know who has more power or who doesn't have more power. These are things that are being taught. And they've been taught for, for many, many years, for 400 years, we were in slavery. And like I said, even after 150 years, we're still fighting the same things over and over and over. Yeah. And it and it's beyond frustration, you know, for a person in my predicament. And I always try to understand and try to figure out why is it so hard for people to tell the truth? And so when, you know, you reached out to me and you had this this uh, book that you're, talk, that you're gonna be talking about tonight, it, it's like, oh my gosh, how practical could that be? How the timing could you know could never been so much better to hear this uh, have this communication and conversation about really putting the truth back into politics because everything mm-hmm. that this world is ran on is on is based off of politics. So I definitely am excited to hear more about. Tell me what the practical plan is. How did you you know come up with this idea, and why did you think it was so important that you had to have this book come out? Sure. So, um, well, after the Trump election, I, I really knew that I had to do something. And I, I thought it would be great to write a book like this. And I started doing some research online. And to my delight, I quickly stumbled into something called the Pro-Truth Pledge. And the website for anybody who wants to look at it while we're talking is protruthpledge.org. And the uh, founder of this organization, Gleb Spursky, was a cognitive uh, economist and he studies people's behavior in relation to how they perceive the truth, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) So Mm -hmm. he was like, oh my God, this is the man I've been looking for. Not only that, he created this thing, the Pro-Truth Pledge, and he was also a a prolific writer. So um, we got together and agreed that we would write this book uh, from both of our perspectives. His from the scientist, cognitive behavior point of view, myself as a communicator and former journalist, uh, as a wordsmith, if, if, if you like. Mm-hmm. So this is our, uh, our, our mashup. That's what the, the plan is based on, his perspective and my perspective combined. And there's three parts to it. The first part is in the book, is in Pro-Truth. And this is learning what it takes to protect yourself from the lies of politicians. By starting to see that they don't just lie randomly. Politicians lie in certain ways. Mm-hmm. To be blunt about it, they like to tell people what they want to hear, Mm -hmm. and if they can fool people into believing what they want to hear, then they can get their vote, they can captivate their attention. And that might be, you know, things that are scary, or it might be things that are false uh, promises, but political lies are specifically crafted to make people want to believe in them. Just Mm -hmm. as like a fishing lure, if you're, you know, if you fish... You know, you've got this fake worm with this fake little shiny thing that right. spins in the water. It's specially crafted to look like a minnow or a worm so that a fish will bite it. That's what a political lie is. It's something specially crafted mm-hmm. to have people bite it because they want it to be the real thing. Right. So the first step is to recognize that this is something that you are always at risk of in the political realm. The politicians will tell lies. And you must be good at finding them so that you can protect yourself against the worst ones. Mm-hmm. All the more, be all the more wary with politicians who are on your side because they're the ones whose lies you may be most likely to believe. <laughs> exactly. So the exactly. first part of the plan is protect yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about lies in the book as like a virus. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the pandemic has become a great metaphor for us since, right. since then, right? So the first thing you do is you protect yourself, right? Wash your hands, wear a mask, mm-hmm. uh, protect right. yourself. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Obviously, it's we just simple. continue to do more of that. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. Mm-hmm. And then the second part, which is the center of the book, but is also the pro-truth pledge, is protect others. Uh, you know, we've all, especially in our online work, we're incredibly vulnerable to misinformation, which is coming at us all the time. Mm-hmm. And just as politicians will tell lies, they are our misinformation factories that are churning out falsehoods all the time. Some mm-hmm. of them may actually be media organizations, the far left, the far right, but you also have literally factories in, uh, in other countries in the United States, those that are hostile to the United States, 
Um, in, in other countries, there's the same thing. They are churning out information, stuff that is false, but is made to sound as if mm-hmm. it's true. Mm-hmm. And social media is so easy. We've got our bubbles, but the people who are close to us within our social media bubbles are our friends, our colleagues, and our family. If they see something that's false and they post it, we see that false information as if it's coming from them. In a sense, it gets in past our defenses. So we're more likely to see false information as potentially true because it's coming from some person we trust, even though the ultimate source we don't know. Right. Look at, I'm going to stop you just for a second because I want to ask you on the first one, you talk about, you know, protecting yourself and looking at these, these individuals who, you know, the politicians that, you know, come up with all these, oh yeah, this say anything moments, but why is it that they feel they have to do that in order to get you to listen, to get their vote? You know, why all the lies? Why is it so hard to tell the truth? Well, First of all, it's not hard to tell the truth. The truth is what happened. <laughs> but <laughs> it's sometimes hard to keep power <laughs> if uh-huh. you tell the truth, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. if you've done something unethical, if you've cheated, if you've stolen, if you've used military power for some purpose that you aren't authorized to, and if you tell the truth about that, then you may lose your, your power. So politicians will, will lie. Mm-hmm. And really, you know, the whole world knows the story of right. Trump having lost the election, mm-hmm. saying that it was uh, fraud, right? That right. he actually won, but it was voter fraud that made him lose. Even though he's lost more than 50 court cases, there's been no credible evidence for that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. He's done the classic kind of a lie that we talk about in the book, the big lie, Mm -hmm. which works when you do something as simple as repeating it again and again. There's a cognitive bias called the illusory truth effect, which is simply the more often we hear something, the more plausible it seems, and the more plausible it seems, Mm -hmm. the more likely we are to think it could be true. Right. Right. And and in polls that have come out since... um, uh, you know, since the election, Republicans in particular, great numbers of them, are believing that electoral fraud was rampant in this election, even though that has never, ever before been an issue, even though there's no reason for it to have been an issue this time. Mm-hmm. They simply believed the lie because it was repeated. It's the illusory truth effect. We have a whole chapter on how that works and how to protect yourself from it mm-hmm. in the book. Because it works, politicians who only seek power and don't seek to serve the people who we'll use it. Exactly. Yeah. And we've seen that for four years. It was not, it was never ever about anybody else, but one person. And, and you're right. It, 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 it's, it's, you're right. It's all about power. But you know, when I look at the bigger truth of it, it's not even just about power. Um, well, it is about power, but it's also about power of one, one group of people It's not the power of everyone that is a part of our communities and that's a part of this world and our country. And that's the sadder part about it. It's, it's worrying about, yep. oh my gosh, am, am I going to lose this? You know, I'm, 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 I'm white. I'm not going to have that privilege anymore. And that's, that to me is the reality that I see every day because that's the things that are thrown in our faces, having the privilege, the privileges that we don't have consistently across the board. Oh my gosh, you are absolutely right. No, I'm, I'm no, no one to talk about privilege as an expert, but people will often accept political lies because it makes them feel comfortable in accepting Mm -hmm. their privilege in a way that keeps them from having to examine it. The horrific cases we've seen in the United States over the past year Mm -hmm. where black people have been brutally murdered. Sometimes we'll, we'll phone cameras are rolling. Right. Right. In, in this country, it's been horrific. And yet we've seen police departments lie about it. We've seen politicians lie about it, flagrantly, clearly lie about it. Yeah. So, yeah. The, the, um, and the privilege of being a dominant group in society allows them to lie. Everybody knows that it's a lie. It doesn't seem to change anything. Right. And that's the part that's the saddest. And that's the part that, that I think that what people never understand, you know, they, they'll say, I've, you know, I've been told, well, why can't you let it go? What do you mean? Why can't I let, let it go? <laughs> you know, it's like because they don't understand the effects that it has on not 
on that group of people, how the effects it has on everybody who's black and brown, you know, it, it, yeah. it's consistently something that we have been fighting for. Like I've, I've been in this earth for 54 years and that's all that I've seen and had to deal with. And like, so you're not respected for who you are as an individual, but it's based on, you know, the way you look, the way you sound, maybe your name, you know, and then if you can pass that test, then it's, well, then, okay, well, let's see how you can go down the line. You know, it's like you're constantly being put on a checklist of approval. Yeah. And, and it's the sad part of, of our, our communities and, our, and in our country. And it's this thing that we have seen our forefathers fight for, you know, for, for life. You know, they've put, they've put their life on the line in order to give us these freedoms. And we're still fighting for the same freedoms every single day just because Absolutely. of power. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, in the United States, at least, we've got the Constitution, right? It mm -hmm. says all men are created equal, but we can easily update that to all people are created equal. Right. Everyone deserves life, liberty, and the chance to pursue their, pursue their happiness. So mm -hmm. that's supposed to be a truth that's self-evident, right? A yeah. truth that is self-evident. And yet, if you look at systemic racism, uh, you look at all the inequality that we see in the world today, mm -hmm. that all comes from lies against that simple truth. Right. And we're all created equal. And, you know, gosh, some of these are lies that are that are centuries and centuries old, right? I mean, uh, one of the things that I'm happy to have learned fairly early in my life is that race is a fiction. Mm -hmm. There's no biological basis for race. It's as ridiculous to categorize people by their skin color as it is by their eye color or exactly. their hair color. Exactly. <laughs> right? Exactly. It's a I couldn't total agree more. Fiction. It's right. a lie. Right. Um, castes, you know, the divisions that many cultures have between lower castes and higher castes, and mm -hmm. these castes can only do this, and that caste can only do that. Total, you know, total mm -hmm. fiction as well. Now, these are cultural fictions that aren't easy to break, but they're not ultimately based in reality. And so there is a hope that those who follow the truth mm -hmm. can break through them. And it's, it's we're, we're fortunate that in cases like uh, when it comes to these kinds of prejudice, the right. truth really is on the side of those who want to break down the barriers who give every, every man and woman in every country in the world, the chance to rise to the, to the level of their capability and the chance right. to give to humanity out of their, their gifts. That's, that's following the path of truth. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so sad that, you know, like I said, we have to even have these conversations, but if we don't continue to have these conversations, we'll continue to have the, the problems that we're having. But the sad part is that each generation has to go and fight the same, the same focus, you know, the same things over and, over. and the more, you know, I always use the term of, we believe that we're free. The, um, the sad reality is that we are not 100% free. We're, you know, we're still, cause we're still constantly fighting these same things and all that these generations coming out, you know, coming out now, all they care about is wanting to just live. You know, they want to be able to do what they want to do and not have to fit, worry about the color of their skin or who they want to love or what is it. they. And it's the same thing we've been talking about for years and we're still fighting it. So, you know, I want, want to continue, you know, I'm going to get off my bandwagon right now, but I definitely want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you you know, you have these kind of, I love it when you yeah. can have two people coming from two different sides of the world, so to speak, you know, and be able to have these conversations and not have to yeah. feel the guilt and, you know, that people sometimes feel like yeah. that they do feel when, when they're scared to ask you a question or wonder why, you know, you know, your hair is a certain way, you look like, it's all, it's just, to me, it's just almost crazy to believe that you actually believe these things. But like you said, if you're told enough and you're taught enough that, this person is different just because of the way they look, you are absolutely going to believe that, you know, it's, it's even if we were saying it to ourselves and we have, and it's definitely proven fact that there, you know, there's that belief that being um, lighter skin is better than not being. So, you know, you're constantly graveling with these things throughout your life because this is what we've been ingrained and have heard for years. Mm -hmm. And we've had to fight to believe, no, you're just as beautiful. You're just, you are who you are, no matter what you look like. And, you know, until people learn to accept that, we're going to constantly have these problems, but we're going to get back to your book now. So we're talked about protecting yourself. You talked about protecting others. What is the third pledge? The third for those who want to is to join the pro-truth movement. Now that's 
a, a vast thing. One way you can join the pro truth movement is uh, through the pro truth pledge. You can sign up to be a volunteer and help spread the good truth telling behaviors mm -hmm. of the pro truth pledge. But frankly, uh, after writing this book, I've met lots of other organizations that also really are truth forward organizations that are doing amazing things to try to make the world a more truthful, a safer place. So mm -hmm. uh, I say join the pro-truth movement. There are many ways to do that, but it, it means go out and find others who share your value in truth. Mm -hmm. You know, here in the United States, there are lots of values, right? There's the value of hard work. There's the value of family. There's the, um, uh, the, you know, the, the value of caring for the environment. Um, but often people don't look at truth as a value that needs to be preserved and protected. Mm -hmm. So recognizing the truth is a value that needs to be preserved and protected, just as the environment needs to be preserved and protected, right. is the third thing that you can do. Find like-minded people. Our organization is just one of many places where you could do that. Mm -hmm. But it takes it from being, you know, so you have the thing you do alone, protect yourself, the thing you do with your immediate friends and family, mm -hmm. clean your social media bubble, Mm -hmm. And then become a force for positive change. Find a community, connect to it, do something mm -hmm. on a regular basis that helps you create a push for more truthfulness. And really in every political system, uh, especially democracies, people are doing that. People are pushing right. for, for truth. They're speaking out against politicians who deliberately lie, mislead, mm -hmm. and deceive, deceive people. Sometimes you know, at great cost to themselves personally, right? right. A lot of journalists have been imprisoned or, or killed right. for writing about things that are, that are true in the, face of, in the face of power. I had my own very vivid experience of, uh, of this during my, my time living in Asia. I taught English in China for a while, and mm -hmm. it was during some of those uprisings in the 1980s, not Tiananmen Square, but before Tiananmen. Mm -hmm. And I saw my students being forced to say things that they knew were lies because the party monitor, this is during a crackdown, the party monitor came in and said, this is what happened. This is why there are protests in the street. Now you must all repeat what I tell you because that's what is true. Wow. And I had to sit and listen to my students say things that they knew were lies. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they knew it would go on their record. It might harm them and their careers. And wow. it, uh, it, it was devastating for me to see that. Um, you know, right now in the United States, because of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. this kind of lying is seen with right-wing authoritarianism. But you see it in left-wing authoritarianism as well, right? Mm -hmm. Everything from the communist USSR to the much more right-wing Vladimir Putin, um, from from China to Turkey to wherever autocrats are rising today. Mm -hmm. You see this, this willingness to lie blatantly for for power um, and I'm, uh, for your listeners living in india it's a real challenge in india these days too indian politics of politicians have always been truth challenged mm -hmm. but these days truth and a sort of toxic um uh religious racism are are being mixed together in a way that's making government very very difficult right. in, the, in the nation you know who's willing to just stand up and say look we're just going to believe what's true Right, hard. right, it, yeah, it, and, and like I said, it's it's hard, but it shouldn't be. <laughs> it's not not that difficult to stand up there and just tell the truth, and not. And I think the sad part about it is people don't realize, you know, how much um, closer you can get to an individual by just telling the truth and realizing that, you know, your 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 side of the truth is not always right, and it's okay to say you're not right, yeah. but learn from it, learn from it, understand it, and realize that. You know, just because, too, I think I, I found that, you know, when people hear things, they won't take the time to even try to to, to find the truth and realize. And even if they have an inkling and think, well, you know, that can't that can't be right. But instead of finding yeah. out whether it's right, they just jump on the bandwagon and be like, "Ooh, you know, <laughs> we're all here, even though, you know, exactly. good and well, this is not what it really is and you know for some of those people who believe that this just happened overnight no this has been going on since before time you know and that's the sad part about it you know it's yeah. like I said it's the same constant fight you know over who's in power and who isn't yeah. in power and people are going to do what they feel like they need yeah. to do to maintain it but you know i think we have to recognize that we've made tremendous progress 
mm-hmm. in in the in the recent times, right? right? You know, women have been allowed to vote. Every country in the world now that that votes, women are allowed to vote. Over mm-hmm. 120 years ago, it was thought that women didn't have minds that made them capable of exercising political judgment, right? Mm-hmm. Women weren't allowed to teach at universities, really, or even study at universities. Um, you know, we have moved from societies that thought slavery was okay to seeing mm-hmm. it as a gross in, injustice. So we have moved closer to some of those self-evident truths. And mm-hmm. I can say very briefly as a, as a man, it was a real journey for me to have to, first of all, really come to terms with what it means to live in a patriarchal society Mm -hmm. and see that it's not just enough for me to say, yes, of course, women are equal to men, but to see, and our entire society is set up to have men have a superior advantage to women at every turn. And I can't just blithely say women and men are equal. If I believe that they are, then I have to do what I can to work to end patriarchy. And Uh, I've written about this and I've spoken about it. And Mm -hmm. my wife and I, we teach one of the courses we teach is uh, is on implicit gender bias. Mm-hmm. And I always hold myself up as exhibit A, as a man who couldn't see his own implicit bias, and but learned. Wow. And is still learning. Right. So, yeah, right. I'm, you, know, you know, truth means saying no to things that are lies. Patriarchy is a lie. Mm-hmm. There's no superiority for men over women, and no structure should support that. Right. Absolutely. Right. But, but like you said, it's been taught for years, you know, that men are always, you know, the head and, you know, the woman's either supposed to be standing, you know, behind them versus beside them and both being the head. So yeah, it, it's, it's definitely going to take, I mean, just think how many years it's taken to get to this point and how many years it's going to take to get, you know, to get, have some normalcy and people just look at individuals as just being equal no matter what, you know, so that's, that's, um, a topic of conversation we'll be having forever and I'll probably be long gone. <laughs> <by the end. laughs> so, like, it doesn't matter now, you know, I've, I've done my due diligence. So, <laughs> it's, you know, you, you, you know, it's not a, a joking matter, but at the same time, you know, like you said, we definitely have come a long ways. Um, we definitely have a long way to go. And um, it's just sad that we have to continue to have the same fights and then just pray every day that, you know, the Lord continues to open people's eyes because in, in, People just aren't seeing what they know is the truth. And, you know, once you, like I said, once you do get on that that bandwagon, how do you not want to tell the truth and know that, you know, I've been living my life as a lie, you know, all this time because somebody told me this is who they are, this is what they do, and this is who, who we are and what we do, instead of really looking at the world as one and stop categorizing people and putting us in these boxes that we don't deserve to be put into, um, we would definitely be much, much further ahead and be a much better uh, place to live and be in a better a world. So I know that there are people fighting every day like you and, and all of us others who are, who are willing to tell the truth. And it's a fight that we'll continue to have until, you know, we leave the surf. So, you know, that's, that's definitely something I yeah. have no problem with doing and having a platform like this gives us opportunity to do that as well. But I also want to um, ask Tim, I want to talk to you a little bit about your business. So tell me a little bit about your inter- intermediate communications. Sure. So, um, my business partner is my wife, Teresa mm-hmm. Erickson, and she's also a former journalist. We, For 25 years, we've been going all over the world teaching people how to communicate more clearly, with mm-hmm. more authority, and especially those who are economists, scientists, environmentalists, development specialists, humanitarian workers, how to do so in a way that other people can hear your messages clearly. Way too often, the brightest people are the most difficult to understand because they use language that's too common. And they don't actually reach their intended audiences because they're all caught up in the technicalities of their language. Mm -hmm. So we we unblock people's tongues. Wow. (laughs) We remove the the cotton batten of complexity that makes it sound like they just are going... Wah, 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 blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's, been, it's been a lovely career. We've gotten really, really good at it. We can mm-hmm. take the most, the most convoluted World Bank economists and really make them sound so clear and so simple because they're just some simple principles that when they get it, mm-hmm. they get it. And that's been just a real source of 
not just of, of meaning, but also of delight doing this work together with them. Um, with my my wife and, and my partner. Well, that that's awesome because you know it's most time you always hear you know no husband and wife wants to be around each other like that twenty four seven. So you guys were even prepared before the pandemic. <laughs> so you guys exactly. could live with each other oh, oh, and, and yeah. hang out. Yeah, and oh my gosh, Kimberly, <laughs> seriously, when we go on work trips, we sometimes go to maybe three or four different locations. Mm-hmm. So we get on a plane together, we go to the hotel together, we. We go to we shower, we go to bed together, we get up, we go to work together, mm-hmm. we eat our meals together, then we do the job, get on another <laughs> plane. We're like together together. Exactly. Well, when we're on the road, unless unless you know, I'm in the gym or we're in the bathroom, we're together all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure she needs a break from you on occasion too. She's like, okay, oh, she it's does. my time. Oh, she yes, does. Oh, she yes. Does. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome though. But I think it's, you know, beautiful that you guys can work together like that and you guys are doing something very, very important, have been doing it for years. And uh, you know, it's a blessing to to have you both around um to do this work in our communities and outside of our communities. So I do want to talk to you a little bit and ask the question about business. Um, you know, this show is all about sharing resources and mm-hmm. and teaching people your thought process of business. So if someone was to come and talk to you today and, and ask about starting a business or writing a book, what advice would you give them? Mm-hmm. Well, um, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. This is what good entrepreneurs know. Find somebody else's problem that you have the skills to help them solve. So that means solve it for them, but figure out how what you've got can help them be stronger and more powerful in their in their life. In fact, I would say one of the things that I love about being a communications teacher is when I when I can teach somebody to be clearer and more authoritative as a communicator, I make them more powerful. Mm-hmm. And it's the kind of power that doesn't cost me anything. It doesn't take anything from me to give them the ability to be more powerful and more influential. And, you know, so that's what I that's what I that's what I look for, and I would say that was is what our business model is built around. Mm-hmm. What do people really need that we have the ability to help them develop and become strong in in them in themselves? And you know, I have to say, um, when the pandemic hit, our business model completely collapsed. Mm-hmm. We were going all over the place teaching people, but suddenly we couldn't even be in a classroom, even right. a local one in Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. So for a couple of months, we had like no work at all. We were really stymied. And then we realized, you know, this pandemic is going to last a long time. Right. All of our clients are going to have to figure out how to communicate virtually. Mm-hmm. Zoom was just coming up in the world. And we, we, we realized our clients, they have no clue how to do this. And we looked at some early Zoom calls and we realized they were terrible. <laughs> so we re- redeveloped all of our courses Oh, teach wow. people how to be good online communicators. And then we wrote a book about it. The book is called Virtually Speaking, Communicating wow. at a Distance. I'll say it one more time in case anybody wants to write it down. Mm-hmm. Virtually Speaking, Communicating at a Distance. And that's become our new textbook. And um, our clients have all come back to us because we're giving them what they need to do their mm-hmm. jobs well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yes, the way the world has come to be. And uh, even after things get back to considered normal again, I think that people need to hold on to these new, as I call them, golden nuggets, you know, these things that continue to help us grow, to continue to help the, the people that you want to help if you're going into business or if you're writing about whatever it is you're doing, you know, the, these are actually better positive times. You know, uh, like I always tell people in my thought process that, you know, this pandemic has really given us more time to think and to reanalyze who we are and what we're doing and to slow down and and say, you know, what have I been doing? And why have I been doing it this way? And for those who mm. hadn't hadn't taken that time to do that, they're learning now that things aren't changing fast. And even though they're changing for the better, you know, by taking the baby steps that are, is needed to be taken to get to this point, 
you know, we're realizing that there has been a lot of time wasted. You know, you don't have to constantly be on the go 24 seven. There's a lot of things that you can get accomplished by utilizing the tools and resources that you have around you. And here it is. I know I talked about this four years ago when I started my business that I wanted to do everything virtually and people laughed in my face. And I talk about this all the time because Mm -hmm. it was like, really? And then of course, you know, now I'm like, oh, you know, everything is virtual. <laughs> it's like you get worn out from it. But this is the reality in the world that we live in. And even with podcasting, and you know, when I did podcasting started over four years ago, it was very still very fresh and very new to a lot of people. Nobody wanted to do mm-hmm. it. And now everybody is doing it. So, exactly. you know, it's true that, you you know, it's a true thing that you have to know how to pivot. You have to know how to be prepared. And, and you are absolutely 100 percent right about knowing how to help people. And, you know, what is the purpose? It's not just about you. It's really about the people that you're, you know, your clientele that you're that have been there for you. And then those new ones who are going through those challenging phases of trying to figure out how they're going to take care of their business. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, it's, we have had a lot to talk about here tonight and I could continue to go on and on and on. <laughs> it's been such a great <laughs> conversation, but before, before we go, and I will know you have some last words. And then of course, um, before you do your last words, please tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and reach out and then find some of your um, books and all that good stuff. Sure. Sure. The easiest uh, way is through the Pro Truth Pledge. That's protruthpledge.org. There, you know, there's a way you can contact people in there. Somebody could send me a message there. That's the easiest way. If anybody wants to reach me through my my publishing arm, that's easy too. It's changemakersbooks.com. Okay. So changemakers-books.com. Okay. All right. So do you have anything new that's going to be going on this year? You know, uh, with you, uh, you and your wife, are you going to be trying to travel again later on or are you just doing everything still virtually? We're going to be virtual probably through the rest of the uh, the year. Um, but what I do have that to do is uh, as a publisher, I'm putting out a new series of books called Resetting Our Future. These are all books about how we need to take advantage of the horrible um the horrible pandemic that we've been through Mm -hmm. to not just try to build back better, but to build forward, to create a new world, new societies that we want to live in. It's not enough to go back to the way things were. That was leading us to climate disasters and more inequality. We need to really take this opportunity to build forward. So the resetting our futures series is uh, written by a bunch of different visionaries for the we want to create coming out of the pandemic. All right. Wow. You guys Uh, are just busy. (laughs) Yeah, I'm busy. (laughs) Very busy. You love to write too. I mean, you're just spilling out all the books. I'm like, my goodness, that is awesome. But I definitely have appreciate you on being on my show tonight. It has been a huge pleasure. And I thank Dr. Glebe for introducing us because Dr. Glebe was on this show last year and it was just phenomenal. We had a wonderful time with him being on the show. So again, I appreciate you coming on, Tim. Do you have any last words for my listeners? Yeah, truth matters, everybody. And when you stand on truth, it's amazing how the world falls, falls in a line. It'll be difficult, but it's always worth it in the end. I so appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation with you, Kimberly, and of everybody else, not just listening in, but in, engaged with their own minds. It's been my, my privilege. Well, thank you so much. And I appreciate those kind words. And for everybody else, before we close tonight, obviously we have talked a lot about ways of putting truth back into politics, but the reality of this conversation isn't really just about politics. It's about putting truth back into everything that we do and how we live. And so, you know, having this conversation has been a huge eye opener because I'm going to be honest with you. I normally don't talk about politics on my show because it can go so left or right, but this this topic for tonight has, is truly an eye-opening um, event here. And, and I say that because it gives you guys an opportunity to think for yourselves. So, of course, this leads me into asking my listeners, what do you wish existed for you here in 2021? So think about that. When you do, if you want to sit down and talk, you can reach out to me at any time and, you know, chat. let's chat about your goals. Let's chat about your desires, your ideas, and you can reach at me at Kimberly, W-S-B-I-L-C at gmail.com to have a 30-minute free conversation with me. And then we can go from there and decide what direction that you should be going. 
And then, of course, if you want more WSBI, such as an additional podcast show or a free virtual live Q&A session with your favorite entrepreneurs, we here at WSBI are doing a campaign for your resource for success. We're trying to raise $5,000 so we can provide some more of these resources to continue to help you all be successful in what you're doing. So if you go to www.wsbilc.com, that's a page where you can just go in and donate as much as you feel that you would like to to help us reach our goal because we definitely want to be able to provide more um, here at WSBI and especially for uh, through the show at Your Resource for Success podcast right here. And again, like I said, thank you all for listening tonight. We're here every Thursday evening. We'll be back next week with some more amazing guests. You can follow us on iHeartRadio or you can download our mobile app on Google Play or wherever you listen to our podcast. But until then, you all have a good evening and good night. Good night, everyone. We will be back next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Follow us on Spreaker, www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. View our new WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 